I'm interested in the uh, bandwidth of my oscilloscope. Um, I got interested when I was measuring other things, and I've never measured the uh, measured my Rigel. It is a DS1074Z, um, and it is a 70 megahertz, one gigasample per second, um, and it's been software hacked, so it should be more than that now. And I'm going to be using this uh, to input frequencies. Um, and we will, so the, the output of this is going into a, a 50, ohm, 50 ohm load on the oscilloscope. So it's terminated correctly. And uh, yeah, let's see what it does. Okay, here we've got, uh, starting at 70 megahertz. Now my oscilloscope is marked as a 70 megahertz oscilloscope, but it has the software crack on it. And that was supposed to have uh, extended the uh, 70 megahertz to 100 megahertz. So this is now supposedly a 100 megahertz scope, but I've never tested it before. Um, and I was doing some tests on the little portable scope uh, that I received. And people uh, corrected me on uh, measuring bandwidth. In the past, I had always measured bandwidth to the half, half voltage level. Um, I always figured that was 3 dB in power, 6 dB in voltage, and they said no. And I looked up the specs, and it does seem to see, it does seem to be that um, for oscilloscopes at least it's 70 percent. So, okay. So we'll take a look at this, and we'll see where, when it drops uh, to a 70 percent level in voltage. So let's go to uh, let's go to 90. Here is. Here is a hun. Oops, I'm sorry. Here is a hundred, so hundred megahertz. Uh, so it seems to be just fine. Uh, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. It's doing just fine. 160, 170. It's doing really, really great. Sorry, my dryer is beeping in the background. Um, all right, so 170, here's 180. It's only dropped, I don't know, 10%, maybe. Um, and then here's 190. So at 190, it breaks. Um, now, um, why does it break? Well, it's sampling, right? Oscilloscope sample. So I'm kind of cheating. A, I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. Sorry, I shouldn't have used that word. I am not cheating. <laughs> I've got the oscilloscope set up to its to the, to its advantage. Okay, there's a couple ways that you can display things. You can display it with dots, or you can display it with vectors. So here's vectors, and here's dots. And you see that when I turn on vectors, it's giving me some ringing here. That ringing really isn't there. Um, if we turn on the dots, and then I do a single sweep, okay. I don't know if that shows up in camera. I think it just barely does. You can see the individual sample dots. Um, it's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe seven per period for per half period. Uh, so maybe fifteen in, a, in an entire period, something like that. And then uh, that's for a single sweep. Now, if you let it free run, then it it continues to make single dot measurements slightly out of phase. Each time it's slightly out of phase. It's using the trigger information. It's moving that trigger over just a tiny little bit and it builds up this picture. So if you have a repetitive signal like a sine wave or a square wave that's always going, you can do this trick. If you need to capture a single shot, then you are going to be limited by the uh, sample speed of your oscilloscope. Uh, so you see here that there's no overshoot or undershoot um, in the signal at all. It just goes up and flat. And then when I turn on the vectors, it adds this little wiggle to it. It's not there. It's it's the um, averaging uh, that the oscilloscope, oscilloscope uses. So at very high frequencies, I'm going to turn off that averaging. I'm going to use dots, and I'm going to use uh, free running. Okay, so that gives the the scope the best chance of displaying it, displaying an image. Um, and as I, as I go farther and farther in frequency, uh, here's 170, okay? And I will go to um, single sweep. And there's not very many dots at all, and you really can't really make it out. Um, if I turn on the vectors, it says, okay, there's, I'm going to draw a best line through all of those points, and it, it tries to do its best. 
Um, whether that's real or not, it, it's kind of a, I don't know, it's an average, it, it, it's an approximation, it's not the actual data, uh, but it, it's uh, trying to approximate the actual data. So we'll go back to dots again. Um, and as we get farther and farther, then the interpolation uh, method just can't keep up, okay? So at 180, we're fine, but 100, oops, I'm sorry, we're not, we're not free running here. Let me go back to free running. Uh, let's see, I'm not doing this right. Here we go, here's 170, 180, 190. That, and that's, what, that's when I have the vectors on. Uh, if I go to 200, it seems like it's still working. Uh, 210. 230, 220, this is 220. You can you could say maybe maybe the 3 dB point of the oscilloscope is 220 megahertz. Uh, I, I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a stretch. I'm not quite sure about that one. Certainly we can't single we can't single sweep it very well. It you, you can see these things are kind of moving up and down. And that's because the sampling isn't isn't quite there. It isn't quite there. We go down to 200 megahertz. Uh, yeah, you can see it kind of just kind of goes all over the place. So we're kind of losing it at, at, at uh, above 100 and 180. I would say at 180 though. So here is 180. At 180, it's wiggling a little bit. It's still wiggling up and down a little bit as I single shoot it. But if I go to uh, dots, and I go to free run, it's pretty rock solid at 180. 190, it starts to alias, uh, but at 100 and, uh, 180, it's still working fine. So, uh, wow, I'm going to give this scope more use. Uh, usually when I do things like maybe at two meters, you know, 144 megahertz, I don't even think about turning on the oscilloscope. Well, I am now because uh, at 144 megahertz, uh, this thing should be working just fine.